shattered by Russian artillery, the windshield of a car that a Ukrainian family used to make their two-day escape from the besieged port city of Mariupol. We meet Natalia shortly after her family reaches relative safety in the parking lot of a superstore on the edge of the Ukrainian city of Zaporizhia. The day before yesterday, an artillery shell hit our house, she says. Half of the house is gone. This is what was left. If Russia sees this, I want them to know that they aren't defending us. They are killing us because they seem to think they're defending us, and that's just not true. This parking lot, an unofficial gateway to Ukrainian-controlled territory for more than 70,000 Ukrainians who officials say fled Mariupol. The evacuees look shell-shocked. They arrive in vehicles draped with white rags and signs that say children, and some, like four-year-old Alisa Isaeva, show up in yellow school buses. They were bombing us, she says. Bombing us with planes and tanks. Alisa's aunt Lilia says she suffered from a concussion for days after a strike hit her home. We walked among corpses. There were bodies under the evergreens, soldiers without heads, without arms. They are lying there. Nobody is gathering them. There was such fear that I felt like I was underwater. I wanted to wake up. And now I'm here, and this feels like some kind of a dream. Inside the superstore, volunteers and the city government are trying to help. Newly arrived evacuees are welcomed at this support center where they're offered warm meals, access to medics and information about how to travel deeper into safer parts of Ukrainian territory. There's also a bulletin board here where some people are offering free repair of shattered car windows. And there are also postings here uh, looking for information about missing loved ones. For some who survived Russia's modern-day siege, this is the first hint of safety they've had in weeks. Outside, Yulia Mishodova and her son Stanislav have just arrived. And bear. Stanislav is chatty and upbeat, but his mother appears unsteady. When Russian warplanes bombed, she says, the family hid under the dining room table surrounded by pillows. When the plane flew past, we were sheltering in the center of town. Until now, my ear still hurts from the shockwave. The unlikely safe haven provided in this parking lot is precarious. Ukrainian officials say Russian troops are positioned barely a half hour's drive away from here. Ivan Watson, CNN, Zaporizhia, Ukraine.